It's hard for anyone to say no to their kids. In fact, nothing makes a parent more sad than refusing a request by one of their beloved children, especially innocent requests that are associated with toys or amusement parks. However, when saying yes ends up in a disaster that leaves the kid badly injured, the parent goes dark and almost never forgives themselves for saying yes without making a good assessment of the situation. This is a story of Tegan Marty of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who asked her parents to take her to Extreme World Theme Park in Lake Dalton, Wisconsin, and even insisted that her parents sign a waiver that would allow her to use a ride that is not designed for kids her age. New information is released about the amusement park where a 12-year-old girl was injured. 12-year-old girl was seriously injured. Back to life, not just healthy and strong, but as an advocate who helped the hospital that saved her life raise millions of dollars for expansion. When Tegan Marty was a mere 12 years old, she saw a TV advertisement for Extreme World in Lake Dalton, Wisconsin, which opened in 1993. The ad was aired in 2010, and it rotated around the Terminal Velocity Freefall Ride, which is the artificial bungee jump of sorts. The ride consisted of three steel towers about 140 feet high that converge at the very top where an elevator engine is located. A box is attached to the elevator where people on the ground who would then be lifted one by one to about 100 feet high and then jump into a net that is raised off the ground by a secondary safety measure that consists of a large inflatable airbag. The jumpers are secured by a flexible rope similar to the ones used by bridge or cliffside bungee jumpers. She was merely 12 years old and she was fascinated by the advertisement and insisted that her parents allow her to try the jump. Her parents couldn't say no, and they soon decided to take a vacation and head to Extreme World. The Marthy family arrived at the park on July 30th of 2010. The weather was great. The park was packed with thrill-seekers. However, as soon as the family tried to buy a ticket for the Terminal Velocity ride, they ran into a problem. Tegan was only 12 and thus wasn't allowed to take the ride because the minimum age was 14. Nevertheless, the family took a huge risk and signed a waiver that would allow Tegan to take the ride. The reason her parents were encouraged to sign the parental consent is the fact that they checked how a few people were already taking the plunge and everything seemed safe. There was no reason for them to worry. Tegan's father even said during an interview that he watched people take the ride and everything looked safe, organized, and well done. Anyways, the family waited in line for Tegan's turn, which didn't take long. Soon, she went into the steel box, which was equipped with a trap door. Inside the box, she was welcomed by 32-year-old Charles Carnell, who explained to her the rules as she was secured in the safety harness. Her father turned on the camera and anxiously began filming what should constitute a very happy family memory. Right. The box began to go up as another worker on the ground began pumping air into the safety airbag. Meanwhile, Tegan's parents watched the box go up. However, they noticed that the box didn't reach the normal height from which the riders would be released from the cab. At that moment, the inflatable airbag and net were still on the ground and not ready to receive jumpers when bang. All hell broke loose as Tegan was released from the box. The poor soul was heading towards hard concrete and there was nothing anyone could do for her. Her terrified parents had to watch their daughter fall nearly 85 feet to what they thought would constitute certain death. One can only imagine the horror she had to endure. Then there was that loud thud that signaled horror and probably death. People on the ground were wondering why the girl was lowered to the trap door while the workers on the ground had barely started raising the net and inflating the airbag. And isn't the operator in the box supposed to wait for a clear signal before releasing the rider's ripcord? Something was obviously very wrong. Here is something rather twisted about this whole and sad ordeal. The operator was actually the same person who appeared in the TV advertisement about the park and the ride Terminal Velocity where he said repeatedly how safe it was. Tegan's parents are educated people, and deep inside they knew that such a fall and the sound of that thud of their beloved daughter hitting the ground could only mean that she's either dead or taking her last breaths. They rushed to the platform, and they were horrified by the scene of Tegan bleeding from her head, mouth, nose, her ears. She was motionless and appeared to not be breathing. Tegan's father, Alex, who's a radiologist, realized that she didn't have a pulse, and he began to perform CPR as her mother, Julie, sat next to her, held her hand, and cried while praying that she somehow would just spring back to life. Then a miracle happened as Tegan finally began to gently squeeze her mother's hand. The little girl was alive. She was fighting death. The little girl fought and her pulse improved as the medical helicopter arrived and lifted her to the American Family Children's Hospital in Madison. For hours, the doctors tried to save her as they performed miracles. Their immediate goal was not just keeping her alive, but to ensure that she wasn't paralyzed for life. 
Her injuries were very severe, as I'm sure I don't need to tell you, and included swelling in the brain, multiple severe fractures in the spine and pelvis, and lacerations in the liver, spleen, and intestines. When the doctors finished their work, they had to inform Tegan's family of the harsh news that the daughter is likely to make it, but as a quadriplegic. The poor soul remained on life support for a while, and even when her condition began to improve, she still didn't speak or was able to move. She spent most of her time sleeping due to the many pain medications she had to take all the time just, you know, to live and not hate life. She wasn't released from the hospital until October 2010, in a wheelchair barely able to speak. Back at the park, detectives and other experts swarmed the place, inspecting the ride and questioning staff and spectators. Initially, they had no choice but to arrest and charge the ride operator, Charles Carnell. He was punished with one count of first-degree reckless injury, which is a serious felony punishable by up to 25 years in prison and $100,000 in fines. However, he was later released, and his lawyers were able to prove that he blanked out just before the girl took the plunge and he opened the trap door. He never saw the all-clear signal before releasing Tegan. Things got heated in the following days after the incident as news that Lake Delton police caught employees at Extreme World doing repairs on the ride a week after the incident and the night before an official state inspection was to take place. The owner of the park, Bill Anderson, denied any wrongdoing or knowledge of the staff's actions before the state inspection. Nevertheless, the Marthy family won a settlement with Extreme World in October of 2010. The terms and the amount of the settlement were not announced. However, since the park was almost bankrupt and already facing foreclosure, we can only assume that the settlement barely covered the medical bills that family had to foot. But there is a happy ending to this horrific, sad story. About a year and a half after the incident, Tegan returned to the hospital, where she was treated to promote an expansion project of the hospital that saved her life. The hospital staff and others watched in awe as 14-year-old Tegan Martini strode across the lobby at the American Family Children's Hospital in Madison, under her own power using only a walker for support. She later appeared at a news conference to help the hospital raise $32 million for a much-needed expansion. Now, mind you that Tegan spent more than a year, three hours a day, five days a week in physical therapy to achieve a partial recovery. She was even nicknamed Miracle Girl in her hometown. Extreme World was closed down after that incident due to financial problems, but was reopened after that under new ownership. So yeah, are you a big fan of amusement parks? That's a silly question. Of course you are. So, if you know of any other serious incidents and survival stories to theme parks and especially roller coasters, do let us know in the comment section below, and do not forget to like, comment, and hit that bell icon. Thank you very much.